Good morning, welcome to Member Focus Monday. I'm HAR Social Media Manager, Christina Schaefer, and I'm in a different seat this morning. You are, you're in the guest seat. I'm because, in the uh, guest seat, that's right. She's letting me fly. I'm David Mendel, Public Relations Manager for HAR, and what a pleasure to have you on as a guest. And, and thank you for entrusting me with the responsibility of uh, captaining the ship. I'm gonna hand the reins over to you, David, <laughs> that's right. Um, this has actually been something that's been uh, requested over the last couple of years that we've been doing Member Focus Monday is for uh, me to come on and actually just talk about social media. Um, since I am a chair of social media <laughs> manager, so we thought, why not? Last Absolutely. Member Focus Monday of the year, let's do it. Let's do it. So let's David, it. it's your show for the next wow. half hour. I, I And I, I take this responsibility seriously. <laughs> I just want you to know. Well, in um, I guess in fitting with the uh, mm -hmm. Member Focus Monday format, let's begin by having you introduce yourself properly. <laughs> yeah, so um, uh, most of you guys know that I host Member Focus Monday every Monday, but that's not all I do. Um, I have been with uh, HAR for a little over eight years. Mm -hmm. um, most of that was in a training capacity. So I was teaching classes almost every day, uh, everything from matrix to technology and social media. Um, the tools, classes, things like that. Um, of course, I was always most passionate about the technology and social right, media classes, right. as I'm sure you can guess. Yeah. Um, and so um, two years ago, HAR decided, let's we need a full-time social media manager and um, offered me the position. And so now this is what I've been doing. So I still do teach classes though. As, as you know, I, I teach a social media boot camp. Yep. still um and i i love helping with the with the education department and doing different things with them too so i i, I so do social media full time but i'm also still teaching and i tell people all the time you basically do the work of about five people <laughs> well because seriously i mean you know you, you're doing this then we turn around and record the <clears throat> the interview as a podcast mm -hmm. Uh, and then there are other things that, you know, when we work together, then I'll be looking for you and you're like, oh, David, I'm now at, you know, Bay Area teaching a class. <laughs> yeah. I have to put a pin in the map to keep track of you because <laughs> you're everywhere almost simultaneously. You're like Amoeba Woman. <laughs> yeah. So it's, uh, it it's really is incredible. It's a lot of fun, though. I, I enjoy it. It's I can fun. tell. No, yeah. you definitely take it from me. This woman has a passion for what she does. <laughs> and, and we appreciate that because you're so good at it. And um, well, let's so let's let's drill down into the subject of social media because mm -hmm. I think everybody uses it in some fashion or another. Yeah. But specifically for our realtor members who are watching, what do you think is um, really the most important tool or what platform uh, within the social media realm for realtors to be using? You know, I I get this question all the time from realtors. Well, there's all these platforms. Which one should I focus on? And the truth of the matter is that that answer really can be different for anyone. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I try to tell people, look at where you have the largest, but also the most engaged audience. Um, so, and for a lot of realtors, that's Facebook. Right. For some, it might be Instagram. You know, for others, maybe they, work, get, they get a lot of referral leads from LinkedIn, right? So really, um, I encourage people to take a look at what platforms they're using already see if they're getting engagement from them and and really just focus on them like for example i've had people in the past they're like oh my gosh i have twenty five thousand followers on twitter <laughs> right and and i'm thinking well like that's great how much engagement do you get though right, right? so they may right. have this huge following but there's not the engagement that you really need and the engagement is how you build relationships on social media so um, I I encourage realtors like I said I think most realtors have a pretty good audience on Facebook really utilize that um, but also if you're not already paying attention to Instagram you need to pay attention to Instagram um, Instagram right now do you want to guess how many monthly active users they have oh my gosh I have no idea one billion. Wow, with a B. One billion with a wow. B. Wow. Yeah, wow. one billion monthly active users. So that means one billion people, different people, are signing into Instagram every month. So that's your potential audience it. right there. That's your potential audience wow. right there. Yeah. So um, also, um, realtors do, t or not realtors, but just people in general tend to get the most engagement from Facebook and Instagram. Um, that And that's just anyone in general. Right. They tend to get the most engagement on those two platforms. Uh, but for business owners, specifically small business owners, Instagram is where they see the most engagement. 
And a lot of that comes from the um, Instagram stories, which we can dive into a little more later, but right. a lot of that comes from there because those stories have fun things like polls built into mm -hmm. them and yeah. you know, uh, different ways where I can vote, like, oh, which countertop do you like better? The, mm -hmm. the, the one on the left or the one on the right, yeah. right? So things that I can engage somebody with. Um, and that's where small businesses specifically are seeing the most engagement on any platform. So I would encourage realtors work with what you're already working with and just make it better. But if you're not paying attention to Instagram, you've got to start paying attention to Instagram. Well, and I've noticed, because I use Instagram <coughs> regularly, and I've noticed that they have made changes, I feel like in recent months, that have made it more conducive for business use. And mm -hmm. what I mean by that is, I'm suddenly seeing these sponsored um, mentions in my, in my newsfeed. Mm -hmm. And they're all related to things that I like to, like I'm kind of an aviation yeah. geek. So yeah. there'll be things that are related to like maybe, you know, aviation, you know, caps and, and other like fashion. Right. Um, I also like uh, like classic cars. <laughs> so I'll get a lot of these like, like auto museums or showrooms. All of a sudden they're in there. So clearly they're picking up on the, the algorithms based on my interests. Right. And well, there's the running joke that like, oh, I was talking about this thing with my friend and all of a sudden it popped up on my Facebook news feed, right? Uh, well, yeah. Facebook owns Instagram. Of course. So they're they're kind of aligned in how they're you know popping up you know different interests and categories and things to you based on what you like. Right. Because the research has shown that it's people don't dislike ads. Like as a consumer, it doesn't really bother you if there's an ad there, but it bothers you when that ad isn't appropriate to things that you're interested in. Mm -hmm. Right. So if it's yeah. I don't know something that has nothing to do with an interest of mine and it pops up on my news feed, I might say, well, why is this here? But if it's something that I like, that's when you're then, like, hashtag random. Yeah, this is so <laughs> cool, right? Yeah. So yeah, yeah so th that's why those, those things are happening. Well, um, <clears throat> I was going to say, so you, our, our members, let's say they're using social media, what is the benchmark for determining that it's working, that's being effective? So you've got to pay attention. Um, a lot of a lot of realtors specifically um because that's who i watch to see what they're doing but a lot of realtors specifically will post something and then that's it it's mm. like set it and forget it i posted <laughs> something today i'm done and you can't right? do that one-off uh, concept right and so the the truth of the matter is if you want to know if what you're posting is working you've got to pay attention go back and see you know did i get likes and and responses to it did people comment did people engage me back and ask me a question right, right, right. so um you've got to pay attention to what you posted not just post something and then and then forget about it right <laughs> um but also a lot of these platforms have built-in analytics so if you're not using some sort of tool that's going to help you identify analytics then check your analytics and see you know okay so i posted this picture and it got very little engagement but then i went live on facebook and it got a ton of engagement well right. here's that's your answer right mm -hmm. go check the analytics and see you know what's working what's not but it's also really important to try new things a lot of times we get stale you know oh i did this thing and it worked so let me just keep doing it forever right yeah, yeah. um and you'll you'll notice that i do that a lot with har social media there will right. be times where i'm doing something for a while and then it just kind of stops and it's because the engagement wasn't there like it used to be um for example um on tuesdays not every tuesday but most tuesdays i like to post some sort of tuesday tip right so it might be like a marketing tip it might be tips for like a new agent or something like that and people seem to like the tuesday tip yeah but there will come a day that <laughs> nobody's, nobody's going to care about the Tuesday tip anymore. Yeah. And that's when I'll stop doing it. Right? right. So it's just important to really just pay attention to what's working with your audience. Check the analytics because they make it easier to tell. Um, but don't be afraid to try new things and see if it might work. Even trying different times of day with posting. You know, maybe you t I always post at 8 a.m. or something like that. Well, maybe try posting one day at like 7 a.m and yeah, see mean, if it makes a difference, think right? Think outside the box, change right. it up a little change bit. Change it up a little bit and see, pay attention <clears throat> to what happens with that post and you might get some really interesting answers. Well, if you've just tuned in, uh, there's nothing wrong with your monitor. Just want you to know that uh, Christina Schaefer, HAR Social Media Manager, is the guest on today's Member Focus Monday. I'm David Mendel, PR Manager, and I'm privileged to be uh, in the driver's seat for the show. Don't want you to think that I'm dominating here. We want your questions, so please type them in as you normally would. and. Uh, 
I guess to, in that regard, you'll be uh, operating as I'll the check that for you, David. <laughs> yeah. She's got this down to a science. And if I did it, it would take me 10 minutes just to pull it up <clears> on a... Yeah. Uh, on, on the, so far, the, just a lot of people the, saying good morning. <laughs> so good morning. <laughs> oh, well, that's great. Well, good morning and happy <laughs> happy Monday. Yeah. Um, I wanted to say, you know, we, we talk about social media. You talk about, you know, like changing up if something's not mm -hmm. working in terms of the timing or the approach and engagement uh, being interactive. Um, it's very easy to go down what I call the social media rabbit hole. And you look up at the clock and it's like, oh, my God, I've been, you know, I've been messing on Instagram for 45 <laughs> minutes. Yeah. How do you strike a balance? Like, what's a what's a healthy amount of time where you can justify being on social media and yet it's really productive and you're helping promote the business? Yeah, so um, that's honestly, I hear that from realtors all the time. Like, I know social media is important, but it takes too much time. <laughs> yeah. And my answer to that is it really doesn't take too much time. The problem is that you're wasting time. Yep. Um, and, and like you said, you, you realize, oh, I've been scrolling through Instagram. And so um, when I teach... Uh, social media boot camp, for example, I, I really try to drill it in their brain. If you catch yourself sitting on Facebook, sitting on Instagram, <laughs> sitting on any platform and you're scrolling, 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 you are literally just wasting time. Yeah. That's all you're doing. Um, and I, I try to give them like a time frame per platform on, you know, if you're spending more than X amount on this platform a day, you're wasting time, yeah. right? It, well, or you're just on there for fun because you enjoy it for fun. But for your business, um, I, I teach people on face on Facebook specifically because again that's where a lot of realtors have have their best audience um, I teach them how to go in and target certain things engage people etc do you want to guess how much time a day I encourage them to spend on Facebook let me guess um, I don't know what 40 minutes 20 minutes Wow 20 minutes is all you need on I Facebook 40 a day. minutes you're, I'm sure changing everybody wow <laughs> yeah so if you're spending more than 20 minutes a day on Facebook that means that you're just enjoying it and having fun or yeah. you're wasting time, wow. right? So you have to have a targeted plan. So really that's, and that's the platform that I tell people to spend the most time on, right? So Instagram, yeah. you could probably spend about as much, but just scrolling. But as far as going in with tar a targeted plan every day and making like, uh, reach outs to people and things like that. 20 minutes is all you need for Facebook. You know, and the one platform that I've just never been able to get my head around, and that may just be a generational thing because I'm an <laughs> old, old man, um, but I've got teenagers and at various times they've loved using Snapchat. And I know realtors have used it as well. And it's like, how, I just, I don't understand this concept of using Snapchat for any business where it essentially is a little clip that then sort of disappears into the ether. Yeah, so that's something that, there's actually a really technical name for it, but I call it disappearing media. <laughs> um, and it started with Snapchat and then it went to Instagram and now it's also on Facebook. Um, and that was initially when disappearing media came out. That was that was the reaction from a lot of marketers. Well, it's only there for 24 hours. Right. Why would I spend my time on it? But the truth of the matter is that it's actually encourages people to check there first because there's a sense of urgency. Mm -hmm. So if I see David posted something to his Instagram story, oh my gosh, well, I have to check it. It's only going to be there for a few more hours. <laughs> and then it vanishes, yeah. Yeah, and so you remember right, how many monthly active users I said that Instagram has, right? Well, about half, of, actually a little more than half of them are checking the stories every day. Wow. So that's the, and it's, and it's starting to sway. People are watching those stories more than they're scrolling, scrolling, scrolling through the news feed. Yeah. Because, again, there's that sense of urgency. If you, if you, grid post something as we call it if you post something well that's there forever yep. but if you post it in your story it's a limited amount of time so going in and targeting your time and uh is really important so to that point as as far as spending time on social media how do you reduce the amount of time you spend on social media you have a plan okay um you could use a scheduler too as mm, well right. now i'm not a fan uh of of scheduling everything because I think in the moment authentic posts are really important too right. um, but have a plan so at minimum and this is not something you have to go spend money on if you have a, an electronic calendar of any kind put it in there I mean um, before I had a scheduler I would put it in Outlook right on this day I'm gonna post this on this day I'm gonna post this and use the content that's available to you so you know that the market update comes out when the second Wednesday of the month. Second Wednesday of every month. <laughs> that is great content that every realtor should be planning to share. Yeah. Right? We post it, go share it. Absolutely. Right? Oh, and the same the same with the fresh report on the, and the same first with the fresh report. Day of the month. First yeah. So th these are things that should be plugged into your <clears throat> yeah. calendar so you have a plan so you're not sitting here like, Oh, what am I gonna post today? Right? So having a plan will help with the wasting time. Um, because you're just you're going in and you have 
again, you have a plan. It's well, a target. And right? I think one of the, along, along those lines, I think another question that a lot of people have, both realtors and other people who use uh, social media for business, is, you know, what's the magic formula? What is the right number of posts in a day, in a week? <laughs> I mean, to me, like, I, I personally, I'm turned off by a, a site that isn't posting at least once a month. I mean, it, oh, to gosh. me, the content's just growing terribly stale. If you're, if you're not posting I'm, once a month, then you, you may as well close it now. Well, I know. <laughs> I, I, I think, and I, you know, on the other hand, if you're posting 10 times a day, I think that's right. excessive. And so, sometimes that becomes white noise. So most of the social media algorithms, this includes um, Facebook, um, LinkedIn, and Instagram. Most of the social media algorithms, if you're posting more than three times a day, you'll see a reduction in engagement. So wow. you want to kind of max it on there. Twitter, you can't tweet enough. You can tweet all day and it's not going to mess with your engagement. Yeah. But on Facebook, LinkedIn, I see a few people are asking about LinkedIn, so we'll get to those questions of in course. a sec. Um, LinkedIn and uh, Instagram, I try to keep it to three posts a day max. Every now and then there maybe is a fourth in there, but um, you know, and you, you don't have to do three every day, right? right because right. remember, the more you post, you're competing against yourself for visibility. So um, max, I would say three on well, those. Well, and let me tell you, she practices what she <clears throat> preaches because there have been times where I'm like, well, look, we've just, you know, we've been in here. We just shot uh, the Houston Housing Minute with mm -hmm. our chair, Shannon Cobb Evans. And then mm -hmm. we also did the uh, Chairman's Update, which mm -hmm. is just a little Q&A that she and I do. And I'm like, oh, you know, Claudia's finished editing. Can we put, look, David, calm down. We're going to post one today, and the other one will be posted <laughs> tomorrow or yeah. the day after. Yeah. I'm like, you're right, you're right. Because if you do exceed, you know, what's considered reasonable, you, you can turn people off. Yeah. Because it does become the, the noise. Yeah. And spoiler alert, the chairman's update is going out this afternoon. See, so <laughs> I had to wait. It was done last week. Yeah. But she made me wait. Yeah, I made you wait. Um, so really quick, if you want to uh, take a sec. So uh, two people asked more info on LinkedIn. Hmm. Uh, one said LinkedIn and Pinterest. <clears throat> so LinkedIn, I'm so glad that people are asking about LinkedIn because it's like the the platform it, people love like to forget. It's like a stepchild, and I, I, I'm on there, and I value it <laughs> yeah. too. So I, yeah. So uh, first thing with LinkedIn, first thing you have to do is go in and make sure your profile is accurate and up to date. And not that photo from 12 years ago. The photo yeah. needs to be a headshot <laughs> from within the last year. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it needs to be a professional headshot, not like a selfie you took at a wedding because you really <laughs> liked how you looked that day or whatever. Especially if you'd had a couple of drinks. Right. Like, we, we don't want that. <laughs> yeah, so accurate and up to date, um, but it should be something that's constantly being updated. Mm -hmm. uh, people forget that. They go and they put in the job category, I'm a realtor, and then that's it. Well, right. explain to me what a realtor does. Um, explain to me what your specialties are. If right. you took a new took class to acquire a new skill or now you're a master negotiator or something like that, that should all be in your profile. So it's really important to have an accurate and up-to-date LinkedIn profile, but also use LinkedIn to get engagement from other people. LinkedIn is the largest professional social media network. So you're working with professionals on there. Um, I've heard from so many realtors um, in the Houston area that they get are constantly getting referrals from out of the city and out of the state mm. from LinkedIn. Wow. Um, people get recruited from LinkedIn. Yeah. Pe you know, people are moving companies and changing jobs from LinkedIn. And it's and the people that have told me about it, they're always so surprised because they're like, well, I didn't really do anything, but I just <laughs> I just keep it up to date. And that's all it takes. That's the so keep it up to date. Post only business related posts on LinkedIn. Um, I would say at least try to post something on LinkedIn once a day if you can. If that's too much, then maybe like four to five times a week uh, post something on LinkedIn. But it always should be business related, um, related to the Houston area or your specific area um, or related to the economy, because, of course, that affects the housing market. You know, so all, only business related posts. But as long as you're keeping it consistent on LinkedIn, you don't have to spend that much time on it. And I'm going to jump in here because uh, <clears throat> to, to the point we were making earlier about like the market report, we mm -hmm. have the, the fresh report comes out on the first business day of every month. And that's kind of our snapshot of what's just quickly, quick glimpse of what's happening in terms of average list price, uh, average price, that kind of thing. Because we didn't want to make our members wait a full four weeks mm -hmm. for the whole cycle before the next mm -hmm. month's report comes out. And we provide those graphics. I've had I've gotten calls from members saying that uh, the image that's on social media is it okay if we use it on our websites? And yeah. absolutely, we want you to. Our you know our whole mission here is to provide informational tools for you to use and repurpose to really position yourselves as kind of a, a thought leader in the marketplace mm -hmm. as a realtor. 
So yeah, we, we definitely want people to take advantage of that. And the, the you know, no need to ask for permission. We welcome your use and we appreciate you asking anyway, but yeah. still. So two people are asking about Pinterest. Okay. And I just want to say for Pinterest, um, it's so fun, right? A, a, anybody who uses Pinterest loves Pinterest and they, um, people actually spend four times longer on Pinterest than they do on Facebook. Wow. So if you think you waste time on Facebook, <laughs> welcome to That's Pinterest. That's an even bigger rabbit yeah. hole. <laughs> so, um, but, but the reason they do that is because like you said, it's a rabbit hole. It's showing me things that I'm interested in, right? You pin your interest. That's right. the point of Pinterest. Right. But what realtors should be pinning? Listings, right? pictures of your listings or sharing other people, of course, get their permission, but sharing other people's listings as well, yeah. especially if you're a platinum subscriber, because remember, it all links back to your HR website. And if you're a platinum subscriber, it's branded with your information there. So pinning your listings and do you remember how long I said people should spend on Facebook? You said 20 minutes, 20 minutes a day, right? A day, yeah. With Pinterest, 20 minutes a listing. Wow. So very little time, but you can get a lot of engagement and re just remember to source it back to your HAR website okay. or, or wherever, your company website, if that's what you're using. Right, right. Um, so there was another question that came okay. in. Uh, Matt actually asked, uh, is Instagram doing away with likes and how do you think that will impact engagement? So I definitely think next year the likes will be gone wow. from Instagram. Um, I think that is going to encourage now. Okay. So what that means though, if I post something, I can't see, or I can see who liked it, or I can see if people are looking at it or engaging with it. I don't know exactly how that's going to work, how, but they, they they basically are saying the poster is still going to be able to see some sort of engagement. Um, but outward, like you wouldn't be able to see as much, right? Okay. So, and, and they're doing that for, I mean, we've seen it on the news and they're afraid like children are too, you know, invested in the likes or not even children, just any, everybody, right? Yeah. Too invested in the likes. Um, I think as far as how it will affect engagement, I think we're gonna see a lot more comments, a lot more meaningful engagement. So that's not being cut off. The yeah. Comments are As still... far as we know, yeah. Okay. It looks like just the likes are gonna be going I wonder away. if you'll be able to see, cause on Facebook, even if you don't, let's, let's say I've posted something and I've gotten five likes. Mm -hmm. But I can see that the reach was more like, you know, 105. Right. right. So I that's, know that that many people at least looked at it. They didn't necessarily like it, yeah. but I had that so much of an audience. So that's what I mean. And going back to how do you know what's working from what I'm seeing and hearing, it looks like you're still going to be able to see some sort of analytic. You're just okay. not going to be able to count a number of likes. Uh, um, how many people did it reach? I also think it's going to encourage people on Instagram because you have those bookmarks. Yeah. I think it's going to encourage people to um, tell their audience, to bookmark this, so right? Know, right? So for it. example, how you mentioned um, the Fresh Report or the market update we put out, right? Yeah. If this is a valuable resource to you, bookmark it, mm -hmm. right? Because those bookmarks already count in your engagement and, and Instagram looks at those. So bookmarking, comments, things like that, I think they're gonna be where Instagram is kind is, of Is headed. that the equivalent of like an RSS <clears throat> feed where you're tuned in specifically to content that's coming out on, on that? Uh, for those no, things? it's just um, if I'm bookmarking it, it's 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 similar to how you when you like something on Twitter, it kind of saves it aside for uh, you. Okay. I can go back and use it as a resource. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, really quick. We'll answer their questions real quick. And yeah. I know you have more questions for me. <laughs> well, too, no, so. I want to give the audience yeah. a chance. <clears throat> so somebody asked about um, the tips that HR provides, uh, where do we find tips that HR provides? Um, well, I'm not sure the question there, Maria, if you want to clarify that for me, I can answer it. Um, Tammy said, is there a way to post one social media site like Facebook and it automatically posts the same, same thing on other sites? Um, this is something you can accomplish with, um, there's a lot of tools out there like schedulers and things like that. I used to use Hootsuite. I don't even know if it exists anymore. <clears throat> yeah. But. Hootsuite does exist. Excuse me. Um, there's also typically the three I recommend to people, Hootsuite, Buffer, and uh, Sprout Social. They're okay. all, I've used them all. They're yeah. all easy to use, uh, inexpensive. Hootsuite is free up to a certain point, um, but it, it, it is a little limiting. Right. So I would encourage people to look into any of those three, Hootsuite, uh, Buffer, or Sprout Social. And they vary on the pricing. It can get very expensive. They can be very um, inexpensive. Um, you could probably find something really beneficial for maybe 10 bucks a month that's going to help you save some time management But there. You, the point you made earlier is not to really <clears throat> get too much in the habit of programmed 
distribution, but to be spontaneous. I mean, right. to me, I mean, that, I always thought that that was what social yeah. media was about in the moment. Yeah. You know, I've got this, I'm just, you know, I'm here watching this amazing sunset, boom, or I just <laughs> listed this property, boom. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think the, the pre-programmed is fine and good, but that shouldn't be, you know, that should, you know, be an occasional thing. Yeah, and most people don't see as much engagement if all they're doing is the pre-planned, right. you know, here's five tips to improve curb appeal. Here's 10 things you can, you know, those work, but the it's the in the moment, that's what's really trending, if you will. Well, let me ask you this. One <coughs> of the things that I, th that I think drives people crazy, it, it does me, is, is and, and I'll, I'll ask you questions about, you know, what's, what's happening on Facebook in terms of, you know, what's the successful formula uh, or what's going to work with their algorithm. And it, it, it's like just when you get that down to a science, they change the algorithm. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, can you pretty much count on changes being made like monthly, quarterly, or do, it, does it, can they go a year with one algorithm and then change it up? Is there, a, because like you just get in the yeah. habit of something that works and then all of a sudden you notice, you know, you've lost uh, you've got like 10 fewer likes in the, the next it's, morning. It's just changing all the time. You know, um, they, they make those really nice offices at Facebook that have like food and loungy chairs <laughs> yeah. and all that. So they're constantly working, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> um, I, and should, so, I should be working in that kind of environment. Right. Yeah. So they are constantly changing. And that's why going back to like, how do you know what's working yeah. is you've just got to test and try new things. It you know, is trial it's, and error. it's so easy to get stale right. because we're trying to just, oh, I don't want to spend that much time on it. Let me just do this for the next year. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, you, you've got to just try to keep it fun and updated and, and things like that. Absolutely. I was going to say, you know, um, I was one of the first people to use LinkedIn. I want to say it was like 2001 when it truly was, you know, your resume online and it was like basically just like the electronic version of your, you know, hard copy resume. And I noticed like in the last, I don't know, 8 9 years, I think they realized that they had to be competitive with the more mainstream social right. media. And it that's looks a they, lot like Facebook. Well, now. I mean, the, the ability now to upload video mm -hmm. and to post interesting articles and, and just truly be more interactive. So they've come a long way, and hopefully yeah. there'll, there'll be more uh, tools and features added that make it even more usable and marketable that way. Yeah, absolutely. Well, um, any other thoughts or, or uh, so just, things you want to um, add? Advice? Yeah, so we talked a little bit about disappearing media earlier. Those are the, the, the stories, right? So you have them on Instagram, you have them on Facebook. And for anybody using Snapchat, that's what Snapchat is. Right. Um, I really encourage realtors to use that because, like I said, the engagement that they're seeing on those platforms, it's it's amazing. And that, um, looking forward to 2020, I don't know if you want to talk about that. Um, just I, I see disappearing media just continuing to grow. Okay. More and more people are understanding it. Um, my mom, who is a baby boomer, <laughs> she uh, I saw her yesterday sitting there on the couch and she was she <laughs> She's was Snapchatting she was, away. No, she was not posting, oh, okay. but scrolling through and watching stories on Facebook. Oh, okay. So if she's doing it, everyone's doing it. Oh, right? I, then I better so, snap too, because I've, <clears throat> I've got to accept the fact this is the norm. Right. <laughs> so it's really, it's really kind of where people are headed. They're wanting to consume that media because they know it's it's got a, an expiration date on it. Right. So it's really important to pay attention to stories, um, real, live, authentic, user-generated content. Like it is, uh, like you were saying, like oh, I have this new listing. Like that, that kind of stuff that plays into disappearing media as well. Um, because that's what people want to see. They want to see what you're actually doing. So this is what I say to people, because I have realtors say this to me all the time. Nobody cares what I'm doing, right? They don't care, right? But the truth of the matter is people do care what you're doing. <laughs> so if we all have seen, there's a, there was a, or I still think it's still on TV, but there was a very popular show all about storage units, <laughs> right? If they can make storage units no entertaining. Kidding. You can make anything entertaining. Yeah. Hello, look at HGTV. It's yes. a whole channel devoted to the real estate industry. And I know a lot of realtors don't like HGTV, but but people are interested yeah. in what realtors are doing and they want to know it. They find it interesting. Yeah, it is a right? good point because just what you, what you may not find interesting, somebody else may be fascinated and with. And the it. other thing about it, the other side of that is you know we've we've seen a lot of realtors um saying like oh cons there's so much information out there for consumers it's hard for consumers to understand why they might need me yeah. right but if you are posting that real authentic content and showing people the fires that you're fighting every day for them <laughs> yeah. 
they're not going to be questioning if they need you or not. They're going to see that and, and be like, oh my goodness. Wow, we, For example, we respect that. Yeah, yeah, there was a realtor, or not was, is a realtor <laughs> in um, the Fort Bend area that I, I follow on Instagram. And there was one day that I was, I was actually teaching a class and showing them the Instagram stories. And it was uh, him and he was sitting in his car and he had this real somber look on his face. And he was saying, you know, uh, we've, I was here ready to close, but we found out two hours before closing that the sellers weren't going to show for closing. Wow. He was like, so I advised my buyers, let's, let's go ahead, let's show up for our time. Let's go and wait and we'll see what happens. Seller didn't show up. He was like, I'm not a real estate attorney, but I referred my clients to a real estate attorney and we'll just see what happens from here. And so something like that, this is this has now been probably over six months ago, but it's stuck in my my mind. Wow. And if you think about it as a consumer, he didn't give away any like information. He didn't say the address, the AD, right. anything like that. But he shared this story of how it didn't work out with this house for his clients, but he's still gonna help them. He advised them to get an attorney. He, you know, the things he's still done for them and the fire he fought for them that morning, right? Yeah. And that sticks in people's mind. And it's really important for realtors to share that kind of information. You make a really good point because not everything <clears throat> ends up with a beautiful package tied up in a pretty bow. I mean, there are, yeah. there are curves, twists and turns. Uh, things don't always work out. You know, you get a, a little hitch uh, that comes up and um, I, I think, if anything, it demonstrated that realtor's ability to to kind of go with the flow mm -hmm. and uh, and to advise his client accordingly. Yeah. Well, exactly. you know, we're we're actually out of time, believe okay. it or not. You know, you and I can gab the day away. Yeah. But we want to mention. Are, go ahead. It's because we want to mention. This is the last member focus Monday yeah. of 2019, and the first one of 2020. Can anybody guess who the guest is going to be? <laughs> You know. Yeah, it's our 2020 <laughs> chair of the board, John Nugent, is right. going to be our, our, my first guest of 2020. But I do want to answer, there's a couple people oh, asking sorry. Of course. where they can learn more. We can go to overtime. Yeah, there's <laughs> several people asking, where can we learn more about this? At HAR. <laughs> you want to pick um, her brain. Yeah. So uh, we actually do have a social media boot camp that we teach every month. We offer it at all four of our HAR locations. It's a two-day uh, course. You get 12 hours of CE for it. Um, and you get your SMP, your social media pro designation for it. I am one of the instructors that, that teaches it. So I might be an instructor. You might have um, another instructor um, that's teaching it for you. But again, that is a great course to take. Um, there's also different things in the area. There's different online trainings you can take. Um, some of those online trainings you'll find are very expensive though. Uh, I would look to some freer resources <laughs> if you can. Um, I try to attend, there's something called Houston Social Media Breakfast, which is a bunch of just social media nerds like me um, that meet once a month for breakfast and there's a speaker. And so there's things like that that you can go and ten, attend and listen to if you have time. But if not, take that social media boot camp class because what we just went over in 30 minutes is 12 hours of that information. <laughs> wow. Well, I want to get in one <clears throat> plug. Uh, I'm, I'm told that there are some seats available for anybody who hasn't purchased them yet yes. to attend. The, <laughs> the anointing of our new mm -hmm. board of directors, it's Realtor Celebration 2020, and it's going to be this Thursday evening at the Houston Country Club. Mm -hmm. And guess who's emceeing? Another, another pop quiz here. We are. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, the, the, the David and Christina Rhodes show is uh, headed, <laughs> headed to Houston Country Club. We hope you can be there. Uh, it's like really the the, uh, the the crowning event of the year as we it usher is. It's going to be really great. We're going to yeah. install the um, board of directors for and, and John Nugent 2020. is 2020 chairman. We're going to uh, we had Mike Wong on last week, uh, Realtor of the Year. We're going to award him with his award, and of course uh, Jamie Gilmore is being awarded posthumously the um, Johnny Wolf Community Service Award correct, as well. So, so a big night a really in store. Yeah. Um, so a couple of people just saying, Shandell said, thanks for a great year of Member Focus Monday. Whitney said, thanks for all the interviews in 2019. Great content. Thank you guys for tuning in every Monday morning at 9 a.m. Like uh, David said, we'll be back January 6th with our 2020 Chair of the Board. He'll be installed at that point. Absolutely. Um, John Nugent, and he's going to start the year off for us. And then the following week, we actually have HR President and CEO Bob Hale scheduled to, to come that on. One. So that's going to be another one. And then we're also going to be doing a 2020 forecast for the year, economic forecast in yep. January. So we have a lot more uh, 
Great oh, she's got these booked like six months out. So yeah. talk about preparedness. <laughs> she's the queen of it. Yeah, so we have a lot to come in 2020. So Well, thank you, everybody, yeah. for watching. And, and also, we want to wish all of you a very happy holiday season and a spectacular new year. We look mm -hmm. forward to more Member Focus Mondays with Christina. Yeah. And uh, if you need me to pop in every now and then, you know where to find me. I know where to find <laughs> you. <laughs> well, right. have a great day, everybody. Thank Thanks you. for watching. Have a great week.